Alright everybody, welcome back to another video tutorial. My name is Reed Herbie. Today I want to be teaching you the beginner's method or the reduction method of both the 4x4 and the 5x5. So these cubes are very similar. Um, just that 5x5 has just one more layer on each side. So uh, their method uh, to solve is very similar. You're gonna solve the centers first. So these four or these nine pieces and then you're gonna solve the edges which is these two these are uh, edges and then the two outer edges and the midge so like just gonna pair those up and then after that you're going to be um, just solving it like both of these cubes just like a 3x3 three three, you may encounter some errors which is called parity but I'll go all over that in our tutorial. So I'm going to be starting with the um, 4x4 and then just transferring um, over to the 5x5 doing a couple example solves on both, probably just one, and um, it won't be too in depth uh, about the 5x5 because I'm pretty sure you can get on the hang onto it most of the time. Um, like once you already know the 5 4x4 four four, you can definitely figure out the 5x5 five five after that. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started with the 4x4. Four four. Okay everybody, for the first thing we're going to do is really just get this all scrambled up. Um, the, the cube that I am using right now is the Chi Yi Chi Yan S 4x4 in stickerless. The other 4x4 I have is um, very bad. And you should never get it, which is the um, Yushin Black Kirin 4x4. It's, it is um, smooth, but it's very locky. So if you try to corner cut it all, like over this mark, it just locks up and almost pops. And you have to like really be careful. You can't corner cut more than that. So if you go anywhere like over that, it does not work. So just. Just a PSA, do not get this cube, it is very bad. The core even broke. So, once that you have your cube pretty scrambled, like that, <coughs> let's just get on to the first step, which is the white center. So, first you have to choose part of, like, what, what center four blocks will be your white center. So, it looks like I already have part of my white center done. As you can see, there's a line here. So after that, um, we need to find two of the other white pieces. So there's one and there's one. Sometimes they can already be in a line, sometimes they don't have to. So for this one, see if you move it like this, it will not line up because there's one on the back and there's one here. So they're all together. So it looks like I need to move this side like this so that they might line up. So they do. You can also move it like this and they don't line up, say they're opposite. So pretty much you just need to turn it so it's still on that same face, but now it can align. So after that, you're gonna do, um, you're gonna see that like these two lines are here. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna turn this side twice because you have a line and a line. So you're just gonna do that and then bring it up. So there's your first center. Now your second center, um, you should definitely know the color scheme of a three by three, or at least it's opposites. Um, like, you know, so blue, orange, those two are opposite, wait, no, sorry, blue and green are opposite, white and yellow are opposite, and orange and red is opposite, so, so as you can see, we have the white center, so now we just need to turn the cube over for our yellow center, so what our yellow center needs to be is opposite always of the white center, so if you keep the white center on the bottom, then you're always good. So it looks like I have no line here. So basically I'm gonna see this piece. When I turn it, it does line up, right? So I'm gonna turn this white right face up so it makes the line, but see that messes up these two centers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it. So I see I made that line and then I'm gonna move it away and then bring this side down. So I have that center and a line. So. Now what we're going to do is find the other two pieces, so I see one here and one here. So basically all I need to do, since there are no other centers made on the middle layer, I'm just going to turn it and line it up to make that line. After that I see there's a line here and there's a line here, but 
try to line it up here, this center will be made, but then it'll mess this center up. So we're going to move that back down. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to see that and that, and you're going to line those two up like that. And then um, you're going to make that center by doing this. You're going to bring this side up or the right side if the line is on your right side. So it's going to be a left wide inverted up to and then left wide. So what that did is that made you yellow and your white centers. Okay, so basically all you need to do is follow those same things, but remembering that you're, you have opposites. So what we're going to do, see here, there's a line. I'm going to replace that to make that yellow center because it is already here. So if I move this here, I still have that line and then I move it down like that. So again, I see this one. So I'm going to do this. And then see what that did is that made this line and this line. So then I can line them up like this and then do left wide inverted up to and then left wide. So that made that center and that center. So now you just need to figure out, looks like I have two lines on a checkerboard. That's a case for the last two centers. So the last two centers can be a bit tricky. Um, really what we're going to do is we're going to make at least one line. So I see that that line is already made. So I'm going to move it up to this piece. So I'm just going to do this. And then I'm going to move this piece like that and then move that whole side down. So what that does is that, that left us with like one piece here and one piece here. So now what you need to do is find out. See, this is the outlier piece, right? So we move it here. It'll become a checkerboard. So what we need to do is we move to move we need to move this piece like that. This, this side so that you can line up that line and that line and turn this face so I can put it all the way back. Okay, pairing up the edges is a tricky, um, a, a bit tricky to learn at first, but once you have solved it a couple times, you will have it down completely. So what pairing edges means, it looks like I already have one solved, so it just means that these two need to line up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the white pieces. So it looks like these two are already very luckily paired up, but now we only have two more to do. So as, as you can see, we have a white and red finished and white and orange finished. So now we're going to look for white and green. I see one here and I see one here. So these are edges. So once I have them and I know where they are, I'm just going to move the outer layers only to uh, line them up like so. So as you can see, when I move this slice here, they line up. So we're going to do what, what we are going to do is we're going to slice this to line up your two edges. And then you're going to bring this side up into an unsolved edge. Move that back into the solved slot and then move it back down. So now all you need to do is do the inverse version of the slice that you did to pair those edges. So now it looks like we have green, red, and orange, and white solved. Alright, now we're going to look for more of the edges. So I see there's a white and blue edge here, and I'm looking for the other white and blue, it's right here. So now what we're going to do, again, using only the outer layer moves, we're just going to move those edges together. See there and there? So really we're just going to slice one of the slides like that so that they pair up and then move it up. See, that's an unsolved edge. So you can move that back and then replace that with an unsolved edge and then slice back. All right, now that we have yellow done, we can pretty much make a cross if we want. Um, I guess if you want to check that, you can. See, like make a cross. So once you can make a cross with all those lined up like that, you know that you have all the white edges done. So. So really you can do all the edges in different orders just looking on how many pieces, but for beginners I recommend just doing it by white and then yellow and then however um, ones you want to go with. So now I'm going to look for yellow edges. So I see um, orange and yellow here and orange and yellow here. So all I need to do here is I need to bring this twice. There we go. So there are two here. Uh, actually no, that's that's um, white and orange, and that's white and orange. So again, I see this pair is unsolved. It's a pair of edges. So I'm gonna move that away 
so that I can slice this together, or this, and then I'm gonna replace it, again, I'm move it up, replacing it with the unsolved edge and then moving it back. So now that there, 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 now there's still another edge. So now let's look for the, I guess, um, yellow and green. So I see yellow and green and yellow and green. So I'm gonna move that up, again, slicing, moving it up, seeing the unsolved edge, replacing it, moving it down, and then moving that back. So, now let's find, uh, there's a yellow and blue edge, and let's find another. Oh, looks like I already have two on the same side, like this. So, what this means is that, see, they are already, like, on the same face. So, time for your first algorithm that you have to use not like knowing how to solve a 4x4 but you know how to solve a 3x3. Three three. So when they're on the same side you're gonna hold it like this and then you're going to do this algorithm. Right, up, right inverted, front, right inverted, front, right. So what that did is there we go those two we're gonna line those up move it up and pair them back. All right, now we only have, I think, one more. So again, they're on the same face, see? So you're gonna do that algorithm again. So it's right, up, right inverted, front, right inverted, front, right inverted. I, I might've gotten one of those fronts wrong, but you saw me do it. So here we are, two edges, slice them up to pair them, move it in, with an unsolved edge, move it back. So as you can see, there. So now I have all of the yellow edges done, I believe. Now we're just going to look for other edges to be solved. So I see these two. So here's a blue and red and another blue and red. So I'm going to move those up to flip. Do the flipping algorithm. Like that. So I can line them up and replace with the unsolved edge. And then line them up. And then uh, slice back. So it looks like I see this, this. So I move it up, flip, see those come line up. So looks like I don't have any more s unsolved edges on the top. So what I can do is I can see this unsolved edge, I can just move it up. So now I can pair these edges up, move it back, and bring it back. So um, we are almost finished with our edge pairing. We, oh, we finished. Okay. Let's see, there may be cases where you have two edges that you can't replace. Um, like, see, if you move them together, you cannot move one of them other to replace the side with. So you may have no more places to replace it with. So when you have a case like this, where they're all different colors, what you're going to do is hold them like this and then flip them. So then they see the opposite 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 so now what you're gonna do is you're going to do a slice move so this is up wide prime so see they're on there up wide prime and then you're going to do your flipping move so now all you need to do is do up wide prime I mean up wide to solve all of the edges so let's move on to the last part which is 3x3 and parity all right, so now you have all of your edges paired up. And now, this is almost identical to what a three by three Rubik's Cube is. So believe it or not, this is like this. Like, so since you have all of the edges paired and the center's made, all you have to worry about is the corners and maybe one edge pair being flipped. So, as you can see, I have part of my cross done, so I'm just going to make the cross. You must know how to solve a 3x3. Three three. I'm not going to teach you again. Just watch my tutorial. Um, so there you go. Now the cross is done, right? So now um, you can use any method, really, to solve the 3x3. Three three. You don't even have to make the cross. So now we're going to do F2L. So it looks like I can pair these pieces up like this. Um... Like that, so then they're paired up so I can insert them. So, you may come across this problem where when you insert the pieces, they don't line up. So, that means your color scheme is incorrect. 
So as you can see, see this three by three. So there's the yellow center, red, white, and orange. But the thing is, if you turn it like this, there's green, but there's blue here. And a three by three is always right. Your four by four may not be right. So see, you do, these just need to be flipped. So to do that, you can either flip these two, or you can just flip white and yellow. And I always just flip white and yellow. So to do that, what you're gonna wanna do, is you're gonna do right wide, two, up two, right wide two. And then you're gonna do left wide prime two, up two, left wide prime two. So it looks like your cross is completely, almost made. So you really just need to resolve the cross and then solve your first F2L pair. So see, that one's already made and I insert it. So there we go. So now let's just solve the rest of it like a three by three. So I spot another F2L pair like this and then maybe move it away and then insert it. Oh, wrong slot. So I insert it like that. So you have part of a two well done. So see these. Oh, oh, I need to move this out of the way. There we go. So I can do this. There we go. Solve that. And then I'm going to do this. There we go. So you have the first three layers solved, or identical to the first two layers on a three by three. Now you have to worry about parity. Parity is the worst thing that can happen in your four by four solve. There are two types. There's orientation of the last layer parity, or OLL parity, and permutation of the last layer parity. This requires an extremely, well, it's not extremely long, but it's very long algorithm that all it does is essentially takes these pieces and flips them around like that. But you may realize that, oh, why don't you just do the algorithm that when a piece is in in F2L and you have to flip it, you can just do that algorithm. But what that does is it flips another edge. So th in this case, there's only one edge that you flip and every 4x4 solver really doesn't like it. So, I'm going to do the algorithm in the next clip and teach you it. So, the algorithm is right wide, up to, x, right wide, up to, right wide, up to, right wide prime, up to, left wide, up to, right wide prime, up to, right wide, up to, right wide prime, up to, Right wide. Prime. There we go. So that flips an edge. Oh, just how about we just go over it again? So it's right wide up to X. Right wide up to right wide up to right wide prime up to left wide up to right wide prime up to right wide up to right prime right wide prime up to right wide prime. So let's There we go. So, uh, I hope you can learn that easily. It took a while to learn. So here we go. Now, we're just gonna use our OLL knowledge. The cross was already made. There we go. So now we're just going to permutate, permute the other corners. And then, you can either do PLL, full PLL, edge, you know, any, any way to solve the last layer, like a three by three, but you will, or might, encounter this which is called parity another parity i know this algorithm is a lot easier to memorize in fact i memorized it the first day as all the four by four so this can happen in two different variations where you have two edges like this where you try to do you know like, like your h but that doesn't work because you'll still have two unsolved so what you're going to do is hold this one here this one here and then do this little right two, up two, little right two, up wide two, little right two, up wide two. That easy. And then here's another one. So you can have that case or this case. We'll have two here. 
So there is um, the one where you, you can just hold it like this and then do your purity algorithm and then solve PLL normally with like a UA or UB perm, but that is much slower than what I'm about to teach you. So pretty much what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold them like that and then do a sexy move and then do your parody algorithm and then you're gonna do a um, up, up prime and then insert that last two, that last edge pair and what that does is solves it. So again, sexy move, parody, and you're gonna do up wide, insert that last pair. Everybody, that is the full method on how to solve a four by four cube. All right, so it's the same thing. So once we have our cube scrambled, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make a line, just like the four by four, where you make the line here, but on the big boy, you're just gonna do a three by three line. So I see this piece here, so I can just move this all the way up to make part of my line. I see this piece here, it's lone, so I can just move that up. So now I have my line. Um, again, this is really intuitive. Um, well, not again, but yeah, this step is really intuitive where you just make the lines. So now I'm just gonna move on to the other part where I make, see I have one here. I'm gonna make another line by moving this here together and then we're gonna uh, move this here. So then we're gonna do the same thing on a four by four where I move this big side up, move this twice and move this big side down. So now you have most of your uh, white center. We're gonna look for another line. See here, here, make that part. And then I see this piece here. So I can just line that up to make that line. And then I wanna hold it like this and then do our replacing. All right, now you have your white center. So now we're just going to do the same thing, but with the yellow. So now we're going to make part of that line, make all of that line, so that we have a yellow line. <coughs> then you're going to use um, the same thing, again on a 4x4, this is very similar. So see this sort of corner edge? I'm going to line it up with this mid, like mid, like a edge center, like that, so I make part of my line. So now I see this piece here. When I move it here, it won't line up. So really all I need to do is move it like that so that I can slice to move it up. Now I just need to replace that so that I have that. So I'm gonna make one last line. Looks like I have part of it. So I'm going to do that. And then see this piece here can line up here like that. And then do that. So we have a three by three and a three by three here. So now, um, the other center making is uh, very similar to how you solve the 4x4. There are a couple kinks. Like, you should definitely do it, like, do um, green, like, do it like that. Don't do opposites. Okay, so first thing, again, I see this green, and I see I have a line here. So I see this edge, and I'm going to just replace it like that, so that I can move that line in like that. So now I see here... What I can do is I can make a uh, sort of thing like this, like that, so I have this and then all I have to worry about is this middle edge, where what I can do is I can do this, oh, no, nope, I did that wrong, where I can move only this side here and then replace it with something unsolved. So now, see we have this 2 by 3 line, you can see this all the way on the bottom, I'm just going to do this and then replace it. So now you have the green center done, you're going to move on here or here. I'm going to choose orange because I see a line here, so I'm going to preserve that line like that. So I see that line is done, so I make another line like I see here one here. Um, so now that the line is made, looking for another, so like this. And then what I can do is I can move this here and then move that back up so that I have a line and the two by three so I can make the, that center. So now that you have two centers, you're gonna go move on to the last centers, the last two centers. Okay, so for the last two centers where you can have cases like this, or you can like do that, that's called a three move case, but there are some other cases like if you do that, 
can have like some weird cases like so. So really, you're just gonna focus mainly on making more um, edge pieces to line up. And then you might have this case where you can do that. So you really want gonna wanna get two dots like this. And then you're gonna um, move this side up and then replace it with this bar. So now you have two bars that you can just replace normally to make your all of your centers complete. Last two centers is probably one of the hardest parts of your 5x5 five five solve. Um, okay. Now, what we're gonna do is start pairing up edges. Okay. Once you have all of your centers done, you're going to move on to your edges. So, it looks like I have two edges already paired up like so. So really, you're just gonna use all of your techniques that you have learned from your 4x4 four four method and just move it on to your 5x5. Five five. So I see this edge here, can line up with this edge by just slicing that and then I'm gonna again just replace it with the unsolved edge there we go so um, you're gonna use that edge flipping algorithm again so I see those two can line up so I'm gonna replace it and then find the other piece so these two that so I can just move it in and unsolve that I mean solve it back um, I see pink and pink so it looks like they're different colors so they can line up and I can replace it with an unsolved and slice it back so I see there and I'm looking for other pink there it is so um, there it can be a case where you have this um, where they're on the same side so you're just gonna use that same edge flipping algorithm so you can line them up again all right looking for more edges so I see blue and white here, so I can line them up, pair them up, and move it back, look here, and then I see here, so I can move it up, slice it, replace it with an unsolved edge, and then again, I'm just really going to look for more, so these two are on the same side, so I'm going to flip them, move it, and then move it back so now I have two pieces grouped together this may be different from how you solve it but um, I'm teaching you my method if you already know how to solve a 5x5 five five, but I find this to be the most beginner friendly method so let's find that other blue edge where is it oh there it is so again I'm just gonna slice the middle to bring it back like that so I see um, a line, oh, it looks like I have two. So I'm going to find another, there we go. So here we go, see here and here, those can line up. And then looks like I have no more um, unsolved edges on this side. So I'm going to go here, flip it over so I can replace it and then replace that, move it back. Here's another line, so I see this is here, so I'm going to flip my edge, like that, and then I see unsolved edges, so I can replace it, like that, and then see these two, I can flip them, so that's done, now I'm going to move this in, and then replace it, and move it back, so now that I have two pieces here, I can look for the last piece, which is right here, so I'm going to move this, move it up so it looks like it won't line up so I'm going to flip this edge like that and then move it in replace it with unsolved bring it back see I have two here look for this one I can have to flip it and then see these two are unsolved this is unsolved move it in and move that back so another way you can do this is you can just look for pieces that all line up so like so, if this lines up, well first I have to find an edge that, so you can do mm, like that and then like that, so they all line up, but you have sometimes no edges to replace it with. So I just find this method easier where you just make lines, so like that, and then I replace it, move it back, and then I see here, I'm really just gonna move that there so I can flip it, move it in, see there's another, and I replace it, so here's one more, so actually 
not one more. You have all of your edges paired except for these two. So there are a couple methods to solve these, but I'm going to teach you the most important one, which is called slice flip slice. Just like on a 4x4 where you have something like this, where you have two edges unsolved. So you slice, flip, and slice. So here I see this is here, and I see this piece is here. So what I have to do is I have to open this slot up so I can move this edge in here. So I slice, and then I slice back. So that solves that. So again, you're just going to look for more um, pieces to like line up. So like here and here. So if I move this, so I see these two, so I move it, the slot in, and then slice back. So what that did is that solved all of your edges on the 5x5. Five five. But now I'm going to go over another bad thing about your 4x4 four four and 5x5, five five, but otherwise uh, this is fun. So the next thing you might have is parity. Let's move on to that. So luckily there isn't any orientation or permutation parity, but what you can have is called last edge parity. So this algorithm will do this. This will do you will flip one or two pieces on the last edge. On the last edge. So let's learn this algorithm. It's similar to the 4x4 parity. Um, there is one extra move so, here is it. So, this algorithm is right wide up to x, right wide up to, right wide up to, right wide prime up to, left wide up to, 3r wide prime, so like that, up to, right wide, up to, right wide prime, up to, right wide prime. So, that solves the entirety of the differences of the 5x5 five five cubes. So now you have all your edges paired up. You don't have to worry about color scheme, just like in your 4x4. So you're going to solve the rest of it just like a 3x3. Three three, and you will not run into any last layer errors like a 5x5. Five five. I mean like a 4x4. Four four. So here we go. We're solving that. Like so, so that we only have a couple more to do. So, see this F12 pair will line up if I do this, and then move it together, so like that, and then I insert it. And I'm going to just do a beginner's method F12 on this one because pieces are together. So now you will not run into all of parity just like a 4x4. Four four. So again, you're gonna make your cross or just solve all well and then just solve that like normal and then do your PLL there we go so that was the entirety of my tutorial on the 4x4 and the 5x5 puzzle I really hope you like it I'd like to give a shout out to people who watch my tutorials Mark Letko, Cohen Erickson other people who just watch it thank you so much for watching this video make sure to uh, leave a like or comment if you like this video and if you want to you could subscribe that helps me a lot um, I just make these tutorials to inform people about how to solve cubes and I really hope you like this video leave some suggestions for what I should do next and thank you guys for watching goodbye